Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making some Kumiko inspired patterns on different projects. So Kumiko is an awesome Japanese inspired technique of woodworking, creating these really fun patterns. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to show folks in Fusion 360 how you can kind of create some different patterns. Um, so uh, the traditional way to do it is kind of with these thin strips of wood. Uh, but in this project, I kind of have it wrapped around the cylinder to kind of make a, a bit of a, uh, of a vase or a vase or a planter, anything cylindrical. That's kind of a neat way. But I also wanted to show folks um, how you can uh, CNC mill some engravings of these patterns on some tiles. Uh, so here I have this in the render uh, workspace, and I'm just kind of showing off uh, this wood. So if you wanted to cut this out of, uh, out of some wood using uh, something like a, an engraving bit, uh, this is a kind of a fun technique to do that. Um, so uh, let me jump back into the design workspace and kind of talk a little bit about uh, creating the shape. Uh, so in Google, you can kind of search for it, maybe get yourself a Kumiko book that gives you uh, the dimensions and the degrees of how to create these shapes. And there's a, a number of certain patterns. And the pattern that I've chosen uh, for this project is the Asanoha. So the Asanoha is kind of like the the hollow world, I think, of Kumiko woodworking. Uh, so let's go with that. So the uh, so the Asanoha shape is what we're gonna do. Uh, so let me start a new design. And the first thing I wanna do is pull up our user parameters and we're gonna create something called like a uh, tile size. So I wanna do the size of our tile. And let's just kind of make it 100 millimeters. I'll do another one. Let's do the tile height, how uh, thick we want this thing to be. Um, so I'll put 12 millimeters. And then I'll put here the, uh, the engraving depth or the cut depth. So the cut depth, how far we want to cut our, uh, our pattern into our piece of wood. Uh, so put two millimeters and that's it for now. So those are the user parameters that we're going to work with this. So hit okay. And I'll create a sketch. It's going to be on the floor plane here. And I'm going to use a two point rectangle, just a basic rectangle. Uh, but what I want to do with that rectangle is have it centered in here into this, uh, into the center origin of our grid. So I'm just gonna draw out uh, a rectangle and I'm not gonna worry about dimensions just yet. And you can see here that I can drag this around and it gives me some nice uh, horizontal constraints. And the next thing I'll do is I'll, I'll grab one of these, select one of these lines and then give it a dimension by hitting the D key on my keyboard. And instead of typing out a value, we already, we already have one. Uh, so I'll do the tile size and hit enter. Now we want this to be symmetrical, so what I'll do is I'll select this line and that line, holding down shift, so it selects both of them, and then I'll apply a equal constraint, um, the meaning that uh, both of these lines will be equal. So I'll hit that, and now they're equal. So now whenever I change this dimension here and I use a parameter panel, uh, this whole shape will change. So now the next thing to do is how do I get this rectangle to be perfectly in the center of this uh, center origin? Well, one cool thing is we can use lines to do that for us and constraints. So I'll bring up my line tool, I hit the L key on my keyboard, and then I'll just roll over one of these until I hit this little triangle. The triangle lets me know that that's the middle, and if I click that, that actually locks it to the middle with a uh, midpoint constraint. Now, I'm just dragging my mouse, don't click yet, and if I start dragging over here, you'll see I get a little, little, little plus sign here and that's the middle. Don't click that yet. If you just drag over, you see Fusion starts giving me a dotted line and that dashed line uh, kind of lets me know that it's guiding me straight. So let me keep going until it locks it there so it's nice and uh, horizontally constrained. So I can click that and then just finish off by closing it out with that midpoint constraint there. And now we have these two lines that we can use. Now if I select uh, and click and drag I can just drop this onto the center and now it's locked in place. Excellent. Next thing I'll do is I'll double click on, on one of these lines. It'll select that line there. And then on my keyboard, I'll hit the X key or, or uh, this one here, this little icon here, and it'll change it into a construction line. And that just makes it so now, our, uh, now these lines are being used for uh, placement instead of like actually cutting uh, sections of my rectangle. And that's it. Now we have our tile ready to go. So I'll hit the E key. And that'll escape me out of the sketch mode and bring me up to the, the extrude and I can start extruding. Uh, for the distance, I'll type in the height, the tile height that we set, and that's gonna be 12 millimeters, so I'll hit okay. 
and now we have our piece of stock ready. So let me hide, let me name this. Let's call it base profile. I think that that works well. And then I'm going to use uh, one of our construction uh, windows here, the construction menu. There's an offset plane, so I'll click that, and then I'm going to click the top surface of uh, of our tile, and then I'm going to go negative because I need to go down, and then in parentheses I'll type out the um, the cut depth. And then enter that and you'll see that it's two millimeters going down and that's where we want it so now we can actually select that create a new sketch and then this is where we're going to start creating our kumiko asanoha pattern so let's bring out the line tool and basically what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating kind of like a, a quarter of the shape and then kind of use patterns circular patterns to kind of complete the shape for us um, and since we're uh, kind of creating tool paths in Fusion's manufacturing workspace, we've got to be really smart about the elements. And if we were to draw out the whole shape, we actually won't be able to select that as, as, uh, as entities for our tool path, for our engraving uh, tool path. So we need to kind of do it piece by piece. So we'll start with, uh, with doing kind of one, one triangle. So I'm going to start from the middle. I'm going to go up, go across, and then kind of close it off, making this kind of triangle shape. Next thing I'll do is I gotta give it some dimensions. So I'll give this line, I'll select the line, give it a dimension, and you can see it's 50 millimeters. That's half of our tile size. So let's give it a real value par parametrically. So I'll say title size divided by two. And that's it for that. <laughs> Next up, well, I'll put a, a degrees. I have to say, hey, how much degrees do I want for this line? So I'll say I want, I have to hold down shift, select both of these, hit the D key, and that starts doing the dimension, uh, the degrees. So I'll put in 45, and that's what it needs to be. And then going back to the line tool, um, let's go ahead and make a line from this corner. And then we're kind of kind of do something around here and then kind of close it down to this corner. Okay, and then the, the next line will be from this, this uh, corner to this top corner there. All right, now you can see I can kind of drag this around and really um, you only need to do one more uh, degree and I'll select this line and this line and give this a degree of basically 45 divided by 2, and that's 22.5. Hit enter. And then instead of applying this to like this bottom here, like you could do that, but actually all we need to do is say, hey, you know what? This line needs to be equal to this line. And that's it. It locks it in and everything's perfectly symmetrical now. Um, so uh, I did that with the sketch shortcuts. Um, on my keyboard, I have it set up to the letter S, and that way you can just type in anything you want. You know, any constraint you want, equal, collinear, it all shows up there, which is great. Um, and these, these two lines were done with the equal constraint. Or you could use this up here at the toolbar, and your constraints are all up there. So that's one piece of that triangle. And instead of doing it in this same sketch here, the second piece to kind of finish off this, uh, this quadrant, I'm going to hit finish sketch because in Fusion's engraving toolpath, you really kind of have to have it piece by piece. So I'm going to name this sketch, call it pattern A, and then uh, we'll do pattern B. So let me uh, create a new sketch and then go under here in that plane, that offset plane. we got to select that same plane because that's where our, our cutting depth needs to be. So select that construction plane. You can see here it's going two millimeters underneath our solid tile. And now we can kind of do that same um, song and dance, right? So I'll get my line tool and let's go ahead and just hide pattern A. And instead of doing this side, we're doing this bottom side. So I'll start from the middle, go across, go up to the corner there, and then finish off in the middle. Do our same thing where we can give one of these lines a dimension, parametrically, tile, size, divided by two. And then we'll do a, a dimension degree right here, 45, hit enter. And then we'll do our lines again. So start off in the center, somewhere up here, and then close it at the top. And then one middle one go into this corner here. Same thing, we'll do a 22 degree, 22.5 degrees, and then add an equal constraint to those two lines. And now it's ready. Hit finish sketch. Let's name this pattern B. And those are really the main two elements, two sketches that create the, the Asanoha pattern. 
So well, at this point, um, we're ready to go into the manufacturing workspace because we are going to do tool paths for CNC engraving. So I got to create a setup. And depending on your CNC, you'll have to pick which center of origin, how you want your, your stock to be set up. So I'm going to select this corner in the lower left because that's how my CNC works. Switch over to the stock tab and let's go ahead and zero out these, uh, these offsets for the top and bottom. Let's say our, our tile will be exactly the right size or ready to go. So we'll, we won't have to worry about cutting out our shape because it's already set as a square. So our setup is ready, and now I'm going to bring out the engrave tool under 2D, hit engrave. Let's bring this out a little bit. For the tool, um, you can create your own tool, or you can download a library from the manufacturer of the tool bit. I got one from Bantam Tools. They have a whole slew of these. And basically, I took the 80 degree, I right clicked, and I hit copy tool, and then I changed it to be a V bit. And I'll select that. And let me go and show you this V bit. I got this from Eventables. And this is a carbide V bit, 90 degrees. And this is interesting because it has a quarter inch cutting diameter inside of an eighth inch shank. And if you know the Bantam Tools uh, PCB mill, it only can do an eighth inch tools when it comes to the shank. So this is a really nice tool because it gives you a wider cutting degree than your shank, which I think is really cool. And this is meant for a really nice uh, carving. And the V carving is exactly what we need for this project. So pick this up if you got it and if it works for your, uh, your, your CNC mill, that's awesome. So going back over here, uh, I have my tool selected. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna worry about the feeds and speeds uh, because that's gonna depend on your material, whatever you're cutting. So I'm just gonna leave that by default. And really we need to go into the geometry tab and start selecting our stuff. So as I roll over, some of these shapes, you'll see how Fusion is kind of interpolating them and saying like, okay, these are one element, this is one element, and this is a whole element. So let me bring out the actual sketches and just reveal pattern A, and I'll work with pattern A first. So unfortunately, we can't kind of do all of them in one go. We have to do them piece by piece, and uh, you'll see why in a second. So I'll select this piece, and by default, if we go to the Heights tab, the bottom height has a offset. And that's going to ruin uh, our, our pattern. So I need to zero it out. And that's the only thing we really need to change. Nothing in the passes. It doesn't need to have any multiple depths because we're just doing such a shallow cut that the V-bit just needs to go down and plunge uh, and do one depth and not multiple depths. Um, but that's it. You just really have to clear out that bottom height and your geometry is selected. You just need one shape and then hit OK. So then you get a little preview, and if you go into the uh, Simulate tab, you can go to the end of the toolpath and see how, uh, how this shape turned out. You can see, okay, it looks great. Look how wide that chamfer is. It's really, really nice. You can hit play, obviously, and see how it's going to do it. Very nice, clean you know, uh, path, very clean path, <laughs> very simple. So let's hit Exit Simulation, and let's make another one. Engrave. The tool's already selected for me because Fusion kind of thinks like, hey, that's the same tool. Go into the Geometry tab and pick a different triangle. Let's pick this one up here. And then we, we got to keep doing this heights. And then here at the bottom height, we got to clear out that offset. So just put zero and hit enter. And that's kind of it for that. So now we got that bit. And then we just need to do this last triangle here. Um, so engrave, geometry, select this. Now you'll see that it doesn't actually select kind of this Thing. It, it does this whole thing here, this whole triangle, but that's fine. That's actually okay. So I'm going to leave it that because that we just kind of need this line. These other, these other three lines we created for us already, we just need this one here. And uh, even though it's going back again on this line, it's kind of going to clean it up for us a little bit. So that's kind of nice. Again, we got to go to heights and we got to clear it out. So we have to keep doing that, but uh, we won't have to do it for all four quadrants because we'll use a circular pattern. And that's it for that. So that's okay. Now we have our three individual engraving toolpaths. And if we have the setup selected like that and hit simulate, we can kind of see them at the bottom here, run through it, go to the end, you'll see, okay, that looks good. Very, very good. And uh, let's hit exit. And now let's hide pattern A, the sketch, and bring out pattern B. And we're gonna do the exact same stuff. So engrave, tools already selected. Let's select our whole triangle here, heights, Zero out the height. Okay. 
create another, do this shape, heights, zero it out, hit OK. We got one more to do. Engrave, geometry, select your shape, go to heights, and then zero it out, and then hit OK. All right, we end up with six individual engraving uh, toolpaths. And if I hit the setup, go to simulate, and you can see at the bottom here that either they're individually selected because they're doing a group of engravings. But at the end of the toolpath, you see that's exactly what we want. And if we hit play, that's pretty much real time speed of how it's going to go. Very, very fast. Not a lot to do there. So uh, that's really nice. And at the end there, you'll see that that's just one quadrant. Now we need to create four of these copies in a circular pattern. And let me show you how to do that. So let me hit Exit Simulation. I'll uh, click on one engraving, hold down Shift, and click the last one. That'll select all six of them. And then right click on that engraving one. And then right over here under Add to New Pattern, select that. And that's going to make a pattern. Now we want to change the pattern type from linear. Let's make it circular. And now we need to select an axis. So let me, let me pull up the origin here. It's hiding under the uh, models. Let's open the origin. I'll zoom out a little bit to give me a bigger view of that um, Z axis. That's what we want to select, the Z axis. So with that select, I need to update the, uh, the number of instances or the copies from two. Let's add four, leave the angle at 360, and hit OK. That's, that's all we need to do there. Uh, in order to kind of preview it, though, we do got to go in the simulate mode. So let me click simulate, and then over here, go to the end of the toolpath, and then Fusion will render it for me. And look at that. That looks freaking awesome. That is exactly what we want. So now we have our parametric tile. We can change the depth of cut. We can change the tile, height, all that stuff through user parameters. And uh, this is a really quick way to kind of create a Kumiko-inspired engraving with CNC, uh, which looks out really fantastic. Um, so uh, this doesn't take too long. It takes maybe five minutes on the mill, depending on your feeds and speeds. But it's really cool that it's driven you know, with parameters and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's patterns and stuff. And when you break down you know, patterns by its element, it becomes a lot more, I think, ef efficient when you're, uh, when you're planning out your toolpath. So that's all cool and everything. That's great for CNC milling. You can right click and post process, get some G code out of that and run it on your mill, um, which is super cool. Uh, but uh, if we go back to the design pattern, you notice that there's nothing here. Everything we did was in the, the manufacturing workspace for, for CNC milling. Uh, in my kind of fun experiment, you see I created this in the actual design workspace. I actually modeled this stuff. So I'll show you how to do that. And I'll give you a quick look here. If I go to the end of my tool, uh, my timeline, you can see that I have this kind of fun art framed bit where I took uh, nine of these tiles and my idea is to make nine of these different ones and then CNC them out of different uh, species of wood and kind of create this checker pattern and then maybe a frame. I think that'd be cool. But if you want to, you know, render it out, you still have to figure out how to create um, a full, you know, shape here in the 2D workspace. Uh, so let's do that. And the same thing here. Uh, so we'll just use the exact same pattern. So let me uh, keep this open. And I'll hit the extrude key. So we'll start extruding. No, don't select anything yet, because you have to change the type from extrude to thin extrude. It's a very special uh, extrude. And I'll start selecting these lines individually, like this. And now that they're all selected, um, I can go under the wall location. I want to be center because I want this, I want my extrude to kind of come out from the center of this. And for my distance here, I'm going to put four millimeters. And you can see that it's going there like that. And I'm actually going to change the wall thickness to also be four millimeters. Now I'm going to change the operation from cut to new body, and that's going to create a new body. And I'll hit OK. Now I want to differentiate myself from these two bodies. So let's open the bodies, and you can see here we have body one, body two. And I'll bring up my appearances panel to change the color. And under solid wood, unfinished, I'll give this a maple. And that looks cool. OK, next up, uh, let's hide pattern A sketch and bring up pattern B sketch. 
and we'll do another extrude, change the thin extrude, and select our lines again. Let me hide body two, and then select that last line. Using the exact same values, we want distance to be four, wall thickness to four, the side needs to be center, it needs to join, but not body one. Let's hide body one and bring out body two, and we want it to join with body two. So I'll hit OK. And let's hide uh, the pattern B sketch. Now you can see here, I have um, a couple of these spiky edges. So let's clean them up by just holding down Shift, and then we'll select the faces that are kind of a part of that spikiness. So like these here, like this. And Fusion does a really good job of kind of cleaning these out. So I just selecting, holding down shift to, to kind of do the group select. And with all those uh, surfaces or faces selected, I'll hit the delete key. And Fusion does a great job of just removing those and keeping it healed. And it's even a, a, a thing here, um, a feature in the timeline, which is cool. Uh, so that's our first quadrant. And we need to kind of make another circular pattern, um, but of the body. So let's bring that out. I'll type in circ circular and select circular pattern. It's going to be this body. My axis is going to be Z again, so that's that blue line. And my quantity is already updated to four. Angular spacing is full. Hit OK. So now I need to group or combine uh, all of those copies together. So let's use combine. Select them all. And we'll change the operation from cut to join. And that'll just join those together. Cool. And now I'm going to hide body one and I'm going to look underneath our Kumiko kind of shape and I need to apply a chamfer, but instead of selecting all these individual lines, I can just select the surface and apply a chamfer to that. So let's do that chamfer. And then I'm going to put one. Now, you know, the thickness is two millimeters because uh, our wall thickness was coming from the center. But if I put two, Fusion craps out and with an error. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a hack. So instead of putting two, I'm going to put 1.999. And Fusion will just say, OK, that's totally fair. And I'll hit OK. And that's a little hack that you have to do sometimes with the chamfer. But it's a perfect chamfer. All of these edges now have been chamfered, and that's awesome way better than selecting them individually. Let's bring back body one, which is our tile. And now we got to do subtract these two from each other. So I'll do that with the combine. My target body is our tile and our cutting tool or our tool body is the thing here. Let's change the operation from join to cut. You kind of get a little bit of a preview of it. Can't really see it that well. So let's hit OK. And then that's it. That's that looks perfect. And it's Parametric. So if we wanted to come up here and make it 150, it scales it perfectly. So let's bring that back to 100 because that'll mess up our toolpaths. But we can update the toolpath. And if you want to go down of a deeper cut, you can do that as well. Um, but you have to tie um, the thin extrudes that we did to it, which I didn't do, but you could do that. Um, and that's it. You can kind of 3D print this or, or, or mill it out like we did. Um, and that's really awesome. But then you might be wondering, well, how did you do this? How did you do the circular thing? It's pretty much the same kind of sketch workflow, but instead of um, doing extrudes, I'm actually doing an emboss. So I basically created a sketch projection of the Kumiko kind of frame, and then just use that uh, to be my um, to be my sketch for, for wrapping it around the cylinder. Now the emboss only works with cylinders. It's not gonna work with a revolve shape or a sweeped shape or a lofted shape. It only works with cylinders. Um, so just that's the one caveat with the emboss, the emboss tool. But check out my emboss video for like, uh, for more, uh, a full breakdown on how to use the emboss tool. But that's basically what I'm doing here. Um, it's a, a deboss, which is cutting in and then I, um, kind of use uh, the circular pattern to wrap it around the cylinder and then I shell it out. So that's how I created the internal shape there. Um, but yeah, uh, I will share these files uh, as, a, as a downloadable link. So look in the description of this video and you can grab these. You can make a parametric 
I think it is. Yeah, it's parametric for me. So it'll be parametric for you too. So you can change this out. I have this fitted inside one of my Ikea planners, which looks really cool. And you can, you know, make a drain hole or a saucer for it and all that stuff. But you now know how to break down the Kumiko Asanoha pattern into its individual elements and then like just go to town with like what kind of project you want to do. Whether it's like a, a milled project or a 3D printed thing. Um, it's so fun to kind of create these geometric patterns, um, you know, inspired by the Kumiko woodworking techniques. Um, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you folks enjoyed it. Let me know if you make a cool Kumiko inspired project. That's going to do it for this one, folks. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.